Cape Town is a city that almost feels unreal. A place where towering cliffs rise straight out of the ocean, where a mountain with a perfectly flat top dominates the skyline and where two great oceans seem to meet at the edge of the land. Few cities in the world are blessed with such breathtaking scenery and it's no wonder Cape Town is often called the most beautiful city on earth. But behind the stunning views lies a city with a story, one shaped by centuries of trade, colonialism, by geography that both helped and restricted its growth and by modern realities that are as complex as its history. Today, Cape Town is at once a tourist paradise, a political capital and a city struggling with deep inequalities. To understand why it looks and functions the way it does, we need to explore its geography, its past and the challenges it faces today. Cape Town is defined by nature in a way few cities can match. Rising almost vertically from the city center is Table Mountain, one of the most iconic landmarks in the world. Its perfectly flat summit stretches for kilometers, often covered by a rolling tablecloth of clouds that pour down the cliffs like a waterfall of mist. From above, the views are staggering. The entire city spread out below, the blue Atlantic shimmering to the west and rugged peaks running south toward the Cape of Good Hope. Surrounding this heart of stone is Table Mountain National Park, a vast protected landscape that stretches across the entire Cape Peninsula. It's not just mountains, but forests, valleys and some of the most dramatic coastlines anywhere on earth. To the very tip of the peninsula lies the Cape of Good Hope, once feared by sailors as the Cape of Storms, but today a symbol of adventure where cliffs plunge into the sea and two oceans seem to collide. And Cape Town's beauty isn't only in the scenery, it's alive. The waters are home to seals, whales and dolphins, while African penguins waddle along the beaches at Boulders Bay. Even the skies above the city are filled with unique bird life found nowhere else. It's this extraordinary setting that makes Cape Town feel more like a city placed inside a national park than one built besides it. The combination of ocean, cliffs, wildlife and endless skies gives the city its reputation as perhaps the most beautiful urban landscape on the planet. Cape Town's dramatic setting isn't just beautiful, it's exactly why the city began here at all. In 1652, the Dutch East India Company chose Table Bay as the site of a supply station for ships sailing between Europe and Asia. The bay offered shelter and fresh water flowed down from Table Mountain, making it the perfect place for a permanent settlement. What started as a small outpost quickly became the first European city in southern Africa. The city's shape was influenced first by the Dutch and later by the British. The Dutch clustered their settlement at the base of the mountain, while the British, after taking control in the early 1800s, laid out a more structured plan. That's when Cape Town's downtown began to take on its grid layout. Over time, high-rise office towers were added, creating a central business district that feels surprisingly North American in style. With broad, straight streets and a vertical skyline, that looks very different from the winding historic course found elsewhere in Africa or Europe. But Cape Town CBD is also unusual because of where it sits. It's wedged tightly between the ocean and the cliffs of Table Mountain, leaving almost no room to expand west or south. As the city grew, development spread instead into the Cape Flats, a huge sandy plain stretching eastward. During both colonial times and apartheid, this open land became the site of rapid expansion, with a mix of suburbs and sprawling townships that today house hundreds of thousands of people. Cape Town's importance didn't end with geography. When South Africa was unified in 1910, it was decided the country would have three capitals. Pretoria for the executive, Bloemfontein for the judiciary and Cape Town as the legislative capital. That role, housing parliament and 
and shaping laws cemented its position as one of the country's most important cities, even though Johannesburg and Pretoria later became larger economic hubs. So why didn't the city expand more along the coast of False Bay? The answer lies in the land itself. False Bay's shores were historically marshy flood prone and less stable for building. Industry and low income housing eventually appeared there, but the wealthy neighborhoods and major developments always concentrated on the Atlantic side of the peninsula. That's why Cape Town's most iconic and expensive suburbs line the cliffs of the western seaboard, while False Bay remains comparatively quiet despite its long beaches. From its beginnings as a Dutch outpost to its British grid-shaped downtown, its spread across the flats and its role today as one of South Africa's three capitals, Cape Town's history and geography are deeply intertwined. Today, Cape Town is one of Africa's most modern cities and one of its most divided. On one side there are neighborhoods like Clifton, Camps Bay and Constantia, where luxury villas overlook the ocean and property prices rival those of New York or London. These areas, often perched along the Atlantic seaboard, represent the image of Cape Town as a glamorous international destination. The CBD itself has glass towers, trendy restaurants and a vibrant tourism industry. Industry. But just a few kilometers away, the picture changes entirely. Vast townships such as Kayelitsha and Tarare stretch across the Cape Flats. Many of these neighborhoods were deliberately built here under apartheid, when communities of color were forcibly removed from areas closer to the city. Today, they remain home to hundreds of thousands of people, many living in informal housing with limited access to services. The contrast between extreme wealth and deep poverty is not just visible, it's unavoidable. Infrastructure reflects these divides. Wealthier residents often rely on private cars and enjoy reliable amenities, while poorer communities face long commutes and underfunded public transport. The city as a whole struggles with challenges that affect everyone. Water shortages, most dramatically during the 2018 Day Zero crisis, when reservoirs nearly run dry and strict rationing was enforced. Electricity blackouts, part of South Africa's wider load shedding crisis which disrupt daily life and businesses across Cape Town. And housing pressure. As migration into the city increases, demand that far outpaces affordable supply. Despite these issues, Cape Town remains a magnet for tourists, for South Africans and for investors. Its natural setting, economic opportunities and political importance as the country's legislative capital all keep the city growing. Yet the tension between luxury and struggle between modern infrastructure and fragile systems is the reality that defines Cape Town today. Cape Town is a city of extraordinary contrasts. It sits in one of the most beautiful natural settings on earth, crowned by Table Mountain and surrounded by two oceans. It has a history that shaped not just South Africa, but global trade routes and today it stands as the country's legislative capital. At the same time, it is a city of sharp divides. Between wealth and poverty, modern infrastructure and fragile systems, glamour and struggle. And maybe that's what makes makes Cape Town so fascinating. It's not only a postcard of natural beauty, but also a mirror of South Africa itself. Complex, diverse and constantly balancing between opportunity and challenge. Few places capture so much history, geography and human drama in one city.